Hey YC family and friends, um, today's devotions are looking at Luke chapter 15. We'll be in Luke 15 for probably three weeks at least. Uh, right, well, one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. Um, we kind of blending, you know, last week into this week, Luke 14 and 15, because there's no, there's no chapter break there. Uh, one just rolls right into the other. Um, made kind of a big deal of that in terms of, you know, Luke 14, 35 saying, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And that word hear in the Greek is, is uh, a present imperative, which means it's a hear and keep on hearing. It's something we've got to constantly work to do. And thinking about, um, you know, the message uh, a couple weeks ago in terms of our priorities changing, our priorities <laughs> having to change if we want to really follow Jesus and make him our, our top priority, um, it's critical that I hear well, that I hear accurately. I said this week that our acoustics have to change. I think that, you know, the big point here in Luke 15 is that lost people matter. And that if I want to, if I want to move from what matters little to what matters most, um, from what matters middle to what matters most, I must adjust my hearing and adjust my sight, my vision. I've got to start having um, eyes to see and ears to hear uh, that the broken world around me isn't something that I just stand back and criticize. It isn't something that I, I just deem as screwed up and, and, and needs to be avoided. I've got to move toward the brokenness. I've got to have arms open for the wounded. Um, I've got to reach out to the fallen. I've got to have compassion for the lost, the least, and the last. For that to happen, I think we have to do what the Pharisees were just not willing to do. The whole point of Luke 15 pivots off Luke 1 and Luke 4 15 1 and 2 the first two verses the fact that the the ones who did have ears to hear those that, whose acoustics were tuned in because they knew that they were last lost least was the, the tax collectors and the sinners the tax collectors knew that nobody liked them <laughs> they knew they were being rejected by the the large the, the large largest part of the population all their countrymen, they couldn't be allowed in the synagogues. They couldn't go anywhere without, without sensing the stigma of being a, a, a tax collector. But who is it that, that we have a tendency in life to write off? Who is it that we have a tendency to, to say it's too much effort? Who is it in society that we say they're too far gone? Those are the people that Jesus wants us to recognize are the, are the lost sheep. Or the lost coin is the lost son. God wants us to increase our capacity to embrace the people that we are uh, disinclined to embrace, that we are more desiring to be away from than to be close to. God wants that to happen, and that cannot happen without a reorientation of my priorities of my hearing, of my compassion, of my commitment. But when we reorient ourselves to the message of Christ, to the incredibly extravagant generosity of God, all of a sudden, people begin to matter. Every ethnicity, every political persuasion, every aberrant addiction, all of a sudden, those people start to matter. That requires a move of the Spirit. That requires a touch from God. I think of what it says in the little book of Titus. In Titus chapter 3, verse 3, the Apostle Paul says, kind of appealing to this need for us to have an enlarged compassion, uh, a, a change of outlook. He says, at one time, we too were foolish disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. And then there's this but, and oh, the beauty of the but. <laughs> but when the kindness and love 
of God our Savior appeared. How did it appear? How did it appear? How did the kindness and love of God our Savior appear? In the person of Christ. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. Mercy is not getting what I deserved. I was a sinner just like everybody else. I was broken just like everyone else. I may, I may have dressed it up better. I may have camouflaged it better. I may have disguised it better. But I was broken like everyone else. One time I too was foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Today, I want to encourage you. The Lord loves you. He's crazy about you. But he's also crazy about people that we're not so crazy about. <laughs> which requires us to make an adjustment in our hearing, in our seeing, in our priorities, and in our compassion. Would you just agree with me today that God wants to give us clear vision? He wants to help us to hear the cry of the lost person, the words of the cynical person, the brokenness of the person that's so easily passed over and skipped over and left behind. He wants us to have a different understanding that lost people matter. Lord Jesus, soften our hearts, change our paradigms. Lord, lift our eyes to see what we cannot see in our flesh, the value of those around us that we would be tempted to write off too much work too far gone. They're never too far gone for you. So Lord Jesus, we ask that because we know that requires a touch from you. Lord, thank you so much for seeking us, finding us. Give us your heart for lost people. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow.